now I'm off to see a house that is supposedly haunted and it is quite a weird vibe up here so I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be interesting. My name is Mark Wanamaker and I'm a professional historian of Hollywood. I was the one that did some of the original research on the murders that happened here. This is phenomenal. So much energy. I've always wondered if this place had ever kind of uh, gone through some sort of a haunting because of the murders that were here. They were sensational. I keep hearing a lady talking to me. It's almost like I've got a lady with me. Um, I keep hearing singing and there's a gentleman with an old cap on him, a flat cap. This mansion was built in 1928. It was built by the Doheny family because this house has sat empty for so many years. There has not been anybody really living here in, in probably almost 50 years. And I think that in itself lends a, a certain aura of spookiness to the house. Hi, good evening. Hello, Lisa. Hello, hello. You must be Mark? Yes, I am. Hi. Steve. And, Hi, Steve. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Here we are. So, am I free to roam wherever I, I want? Yes, wherever you're pulled to. Ah! Okay. Hoping you'll be pulled somewhere. <laughs> Yay, let's go and sort it out. Yeah. Let's go in here. Wow, wow, what an amazing place. And the feel here is... It's stunning. I've been doing this for many years and I met many psychics. I'm convinced that they do feel things that normally most people do not feel. Uh, can we just go up? Because up, up in this balcony, I'm really drawn up into this top, one of the top rooms. Does that make sense? <laughs> Was ever Betty Davies here? Yes. Because all I kept hearing was Betty Davies, Betty Davies, Betty Davies. twice. I don't know anything about Betty Davies, but what I want to do is, I just keep hearing a woman, and she's all dressed in white, and she's like, la, 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 and she just walks up and down hmm. with a really, really, like, quite sweet voice, very almost angelic voice, but it's, like, filled, and this is a person who I, I, I'm almost taking on the presence of her because I just feel like I need to be loved, glamour. Um, and again, you saying there was many film types, but that's the sort of thing. It I could feel. be Mrs. Doheny also, the lady of the house. She put a brave face on, you know. Everything to the outside world was like rosy, but inside I feel she was very much a traumatized lady. It's this room here. Yes. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Um, this was her suite, wasn't yes. it? This was her suite because right here. she dim Oh my What's god. It? As I walked into the lady of the house's room, had a lot of sadness about her. The energy around here is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, this woman had dresses, she had jewelry, but she never had the love. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. When she went in the room, Mrs. Uh, Doheny's room, immediately, she was talking about physically how she looked, how she acted, her warmth, etc. That was Mrs. Doheny. She had everything. Okay, thank you. She keeps telling me she was never happy. Did she commit suicide? No. Because I feel as though someone's actually committed suicide yes. on this land. Yes. Um, it happened in the West Wing. I keep hearing, seeing that someone was murdered here. Yes. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Because I keep seeing blood. I need to get out of here. Oh my God. I don't like it in here. Do you know so, Edward? Well, Edward is one, is one of the names. Edward. Edward L. Edward. When Lisa, of course, came up with the uh, name Edward, I mean, I immediately, you know, Edward L. Doheny. Who's the little man that has a flat cap? Don't like him. Hmm. Now you're getting somewhere. He informs Mr. Doheny of things. It's like his personal servant, his personal... Thank you. That's personal... It. Um, PA, let's call him a PA. Secretary. Yeah, personal assistant. When we were standing in the gun room and she said that I think it's Mr. Doheny's personal assistant, I then immediately got, I had a smile on my face and I thought, wow, she is right on target. It's him I don't like. The assistant, Mr. Plunkett. I feel that he's still very present in this, in this area because it's like, Okay, and he's coming close to me now, and I feel as though he's got a very negative energy. 
Totally correct. And Plunkett, of course, uh, I believe had mental problems. I just feel very twisted. He was twisted. A very twisted, a twisted person. Are you sure Mr. Tahini wasn't having an affair? Well, it was said that he might be having some sort of an affair, but I don't know if it was a sexual one or for some sort of some kind of a psychological affair. I think there was something very strange going on between Mr. Dehaney and Mr. Plunkett. They always speculated that there was a homosexual affair between uh, Plunkett and Dohaney. I feel as though there was certainly an affair. Mm -hmm. But then it had to end and then there was almost like this twisted mind game. Mm -hmm. What I actually feel as though is Mr. Plunkett twisted the relationship that he had with Mr. Dahini. Murder happened down there. Correct. Third room down. Just been told third room yes, down. Yes, yes. The three rooms? Yeah, the library, one. This is not a room. Okay. Two and three. And the third room is, is Plunkett's room, the murder room. It's this room that I don't like. It's got very negative energy. Mm. This is the assistant's room, Mr. Plunkett. I feel that the gentleman who owned the place took this person very close to his heart. Does that make sense? Yes. Embraced this person, yes. took him in, almost as a brotherly love. That's right. You know, and I feel a huge, huge, huge amount of sadness here. What are you feeling when you hold your stomach? Pain. pain? A lot of pain. Yes. Is this where he got shot? Yeah. What she was talking about, this feeling, actually is connected directly to historical people and facts. Well, I'll tell you what happened. I think Mr. Plunkett was in here being very private for some reason. He, he's got sneaky papers in here. He's got sneaky things. He's hidden things in here. Hmm. I don't know why, but I feel there's things happening and I feel as though the owner of the house walked in and an argument happened. But it was a pistol that Mr. Plunkett kept in this room mm -hmm. that killed the owner of the house. Right. But I feel the suicide happened there. Mm -hmm. Lisa brought out that uh, Plunkett definitely was diabolical, twisted, and was psychotic to the point in which a murder-suicide actually did occur. And I, I see a gentleman coming in and an argument breaking out. There's a document that he's got in his hand and I feel there was a, it was all over a piece of document, thank you very much, an evidential piece of paper which has since gone missing because I feel as though there was a signature needed for this document. What I think happened in the so-called murder room, there was some form of documentation that Mr. Dahini wanted his assistant to sign, but I actually feel as though the assistant didn't want to sign it, and it was literally over his dead body. Mr. Dahini knew that Plunkett was becoming unmanageable yeah. in his mental illness, and there was going to be a possible commitment right. of Plunkett. Right. Maybe that paper had something to do with this. And he's quite a calming person, you know, Mr. Dahini, but he's walking in yeah. and I see him laying down a document, needing a signature for it, and it's as though that's when it happens. They had some sort of an altercation and the male secretary shot and killed his boss and committed suicide. I'd really like to know, because I know no history about this place, um, but obviously the information that I gave you tonight, was I on the truth, folklores, was I close to it? Tell me your opinion. I would say that you were right on immediately, Excellent. pretty much. 
uh, we drew it drew it out. But yeah. it was almost became obvious of what you were saying. Yeah. Two men, uh, <laughs> suicide, a murder. I mean, it's almost comes to the conclusion. Yeah. You came pretty early on this. Yeah. Right away, you felt this. It is a it's a, it's a real story. It's, it is. It's a Hollywood story. I was going to say it should be in the movies. <laughs> well, maybe one day. It was fantastic to be here. I mean, words just can't describe it. It was amazing just to be part of culture, history. This is everything I imagined old Hollywood to be. Thank you so much again. Take care. Bye. Bye. It's phenomenal. What an amazing place.